of the challenges I'm seeing right now in the industry, especially impacting healthcare, is a lot of organizations are purchasing iPads or other tablets to be able to provide a telehealth or a kiosk type solution. The idea of I take an app like a Zoom or a WebEx and I put it on an iPad or a tablet, and that's the only app that user or patient can interact with, having a kiosk type solution. In today's video, I wanna show you exactly that, how we take an iPad, provision it directly into a kiosk mode. In this case, I'm gonna show you exactly how we take Zoom, put it on an iPad, and have that the only app that a patient or a user can interact with. But really, this can apply to a variety of different tablets, whether that's iOS or Android, or other different applications that really we just wanna have a kiosk type experience where we only have one app for that user to be able to interact with. So let's actually see what the experience looks like provisioning an iPad directly into a kiosk mode. So with me, I've got a factory reset iPad. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the setup assistant. I'm gonna set up manually and choose my network. The first thing that any iOS device is doing once it hits internet is actually talking to Apple servers for activation. In the case of, of a device that's registered to an organization's Apple Business Manager account, Apple's actually gonna hand that device off to the MDM to, pro to provision itself. So what you're seeing here is that Apple's already recognized my device belongs to my MDM is, and is automatically putting itself into remote management. So I'll go ahead and hit it next, and at this point, it's actually asking me to log into my MDM. Now it's pulling all the configurations that I've already set uh, ahead of time in my MDM. And there you have it. Installed Zoom automatically in kiosk mode. I've actually disabled the home button so we can't hit the home button and the users can't get out of this application. So it's locked to this single application. Uh, and there's nothing else that the users can do on this device. Now to make this solution work, there are some prerequisites. First, we have to have an iOS device that is enrolled in Apple Business Manager. This is essential because we need the device supervised. And if a device is enrolled into Apple Business Manager and then provisioned into your MDM, that device becomes a supervised device. And then two, we need to leverage within the Apple Business Manager volume purchasing program. This allows us to purchase applications, whether they're free or paid, and be able to distribute those through our MDM without the need of a personal iCloud account on the device. And then three, we need an MDM or UEM, Unified Endpoint Management System. There's a lot out there, VMware Workspace ONE, Jamf, MobileIron, Moss 360. So once we have all of those prerequisites, we can actually start diving into how the process works. So let's get into it. First things first, I'm gonna log into Apple Business Manager and we wanna make sure that we purchase the Zoom application. To do that, it's under Apps and Books, and then you can, right up here in the top, you can actually search for whatever application you need. In this case, I'm gonna search for Zoom. I've actually already purchased the required licensing I need, but if you needed to, just select your location, essentially select the MDM server that you've already integrated with and the amount that you need. Once you've got your applications, we can head over to our MDM. In this case, I'm actually using VMware Workspace ONE. Like I said, many of the other MDMs will do this as well. First, I'm actually gonna to go to Apps and Books and, um, I'm gonna to go to purchase. So once we go to purchase, there's a difference between public and purchase. Public are your just apps from your app store. And uh, for most corporate use cases, I don't recommend this. If we push a public application, it requires an iCloud account on there. This is why we're leveraging Volume Purchasing Program because we purchased the app as a corporation and we don't need an iCloud account on there. So I'm going to my purchased here. I actually scroll down here and I've got Zooms right there. So it's already synced to my MDM. So at that point, I can click on it, select the amount of licenses that we wanna hold, save and assign, and then you'll add your smart group here. I've already added added the smart group here, but you're gonna, you'll add whatever devices or user groups that you wanna assign these applications to. And then next, we actually wanna start building our profiles. You'll see here, I've actually got quite a few profiles built for my kiosk use case. Really best practices here is don't nest too many payloads or profiles together. So, you know, my best recommendation is build a single profile for Wi-Fi, build a single profile for your single app mode, and then build a single profile for any other configurations you have there. The reason why is if we nest too many together and then we, uh, it makes it a lot harder to try to troubleshoot if something's not going right with the configuration. So the most important here is your actual single app mode profile. Um, really, you could just do this single profile with maybe a Wi-Fi configuration and really that's it. You, uh, you can get away with that. I'm gonna scroll down here and you're gonna sing single app mode. Honestly, most MDMs will call it single app mode. Some may call it kiosk. 
Uh, but once you click single app mode, uh, you're gonna select the bundle ID or the application in here. A lot of times since we've already synced our application from VPP to our MDM, a lot of times they'll just automatically show up here and you can select them. If not, you'll need the bundle ID of that application. And then additionally, you'll see here, you've got a lot of um, additional features you can do around the kiosk mode. So uh, we can disable things like the touch screen, disable the volume button, so we can really curate the experience we want for our kiosk solution. And you'll see here, I've got disable auto lock. One of the things I see a lot of customers struggle with is they've got a single app mode, but after three, five, 15 minutes, the screen actually dims and they have to hit the home button to get back into the application. If you want to remove that and you just want the, the, the device to remain on all the time, hit this disable auto lock and that fixes the issue for you. And you'll see here at the at the right hand side, it says supervised. This is why I said we have to have the device enrolled through Apple Business Manager. This is a supervised feature only. So once you've got that created, go ahead and save and publish. Make sure you sign it to the group that needs it. And then play around with a, additional profiles. Like I've got uh, addition to my profile payload, I've also got a restrictions profile. So I'm, I'm, I'm configuring some additional things on the device as well. I'm also doing a lock screen message. Not completely necessary, but if, if the device does turn off at, after a certain amount of time, I've got something on there that actually uh, says property of Michael Goad, uh, loss, call, this number, or you can put in telehealth use only. So you can, you can put some creative stuff on there as well. Not necessary, but um, stuff that you can play around with. So that is a process of enabling single app mode or kiosk mode within your MDM. I hope that was helpful. Again, this process can be applied to both iOS and Android devices. Most MDMs will be able to manage both of those, but I hope this was educational for you. And if you have any questions, please place them in the comments. And I hope you guys all have an awesome day.